Hi, so welcome to Lecture 8. Um, in Lecture 8 we're going to cover um, a bunch of different topics. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about processes, links, aliases, and uh, inodes, which is something I'm going to talk about right now. Um, inodes is kind of a weird theoretical concept. It's not really something we're going to test you on, but it will really help uh, when we start talking about links. Okay, uh, so very beginning what I'm just going to do is I'm going to be going into my ULI uh, directory and I think what I'll just do is uh, I'm going to create I'm going to use the touch command uh, to basically uh, create a empty file okay and I'm going to use LS just to be looking at test 2 so let's take a look okay so uh, we've gotten a little bit comfortable with um, taking a look at this information that we get um, so we see here the permission level hopefully we've talked talked about that you know what it's what it means um, you can see the user ID over here you can see the group over here uh, you can see a timestamp when this was created uh, so this is exactly when it was created and you can see that it has a file size of zero okay so we've talked about all kinds of that all that stuff basically um, but here's what something I want you to think about. Um, we have this piece of information here, right? We have this information here. Um, how can we know something about test two when it has a file size of zero, right? If we have a file size of zero, we have nowhere to put the uh, information like who's the owner, what's the group, What's the permission level? What's the timestamp? All of this stuff is going to take bytes to store. So, what's going on here? So, this weird little puzzle of um, how we can have information that we know about a file that has nothing in it um, introduces us to this idea of inodes. And so, you can think of inodes as um, containing this metadata, we might say. You know, like if you have, uh, for example, like an MP3 song or something like that, you have the raw data, which is the audio, but you also might have metadata connected to it, right? You would have artist name, maybe the album name, the year it came out, maybe the genre. Sometimes they even encode something like a like a an image of the cover or something like that. So you can think about this as being uh, very, very similar. Um, the information that you're seeing right now is contained in an inode. And we can do one thing here. What I can do is use ls again. Um, this time I'm going to add a flag that's uh, i. And you can guess what that's going to do. OK, so I bring that up. And what the i flag is going to do is um, it's going to print the inode. So the inode is containing the user ID, the group ID, timestamp, uh, permission level, all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's also pointing to a location on the file system. Okay? So for example, if I'm taking a look at something, uh, maybe you know, or maybe you don't know, when we're looking at file systems, we're when we get past the abstraction of file names and things like that we're actually looking at blocks of data right uh, you can see here that I've got a number of 1k blocks so each of these blocks is gonna have like 1024 bytes okay and this is where our data is encoded it's just like it's a location on the drive it's a certain block with a certain address if you're working with um, C programming language right now, uh, you've already maybe talked a little bit about pointers. It's this idea that you're uh, pointing to an address in a certain location. Okay, so another way to maybe think about this is um, we have this scheme set up. Um, we have our inode right here, and the inode is you, we, what we use as a unique number. So in this case, we've got 327, 58, five nine six um, the uh, inode also contains like I said all this metadata and it 
points to a beginning block on the drive where we start to read the information that would be in this file. Okay, the one thing that we're not talking about yet, and the one thing that the inode does not contain, is a file name. Okay, inode does not have a name attributed to it, test2. We have a number attached to it, but we don't have the file name. Okay, so if you're wrapping your head around this, um, that's good. And it helps us to start talking about hard links. So that's where I'm going to add this. And I'll use my example of test two. So we've got another step in this process. We have a link pointing to an inode. And an inode inevitably is going to be pointing to a location on the drive where you're actually keeping your raw data. Make sense? Okay, so with that all in mind, uh, I think what I'm going to do is, just let me get rid of this. Um, I'm going to start talking about hard links now and start introducing some commands that you will need to know for quizzes and tests and stuff like that. So let me open up uh, my location for lecture 8. I'm just going to clear this. Uh, you can see right now that I have a file called cars. Let's take a look inside cars. So. As you can see, this uh, probably looks very familiar. Uh, we're going to be dealing with this file quite a bit. You can see it's got contents and everything like that. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do with this file is I'm going to create a link to it. And the command for this is ln. Okay. The first argument I'm going to give it is the name of the file that we already have existing. Okay and I'm going to give this hard link a name. I'm going to call it link to cars. Okay. Let's take a look inside our directory again. You can see that I've got two entries now. Um, they have the same user, they have the same group, they have the same file size, same timestamp, same permission level, and you can see this number over here has switched. It used to be one and now it's two. So this number act here, um, we haven't talked about it yet, but this is giving us the number of links to this inode in question. Okay, and let me do another thing. I'm going to use the ls-li again um, in this directory. And what you can see now that we're looking at the inode, these have an, a matching inode, right? These are two links to the same inode. Okay, so what I want to point out is that this link that I've created, this hard link that I've created, um, is indistinguishable from any other file that you've been creating up until this point, right? Um, I can do cat link to cars. I can see inside this file, right? It behaves the same way as everything we've seen before. Um, let me clear the screen here and I'll do just another thing, um, you know, going to just create another let's take a look so you can see now we've iterated up to number three if I do ls-li again all the same I node okay okay so I'm just gonna create another link just to show you again let's go back let's do this so you can see, once again, we're iterating up. Now we have three links, and we have links to the same inode. Uh, let's say that I remove cars. What happens? Well, we've still got these, and we've still got two links to the same inode. So when I'm removing cars, you have to get out of the mindset of me removing or deleting the original file. I'm not deleting the original file. All I'm doing is deleting the original link to the inode to that data on the file system. So we still have two links to that to that um, data. So that means it's still going to exist there, right? What happens if I delete all of these links? Well, at that point, we get rid of the inode. Uh, we free up the number 25828049 we can use it for something else the data is probably just going to sit on that uh, hard drive 
until it gets overwritten. But it's been marked as like a freed up space that we can, you know, use and overwrite safely and stuff like that. And that's how we can actually, um, like if you have some data that you accidentally delete and you really need to get back, you can take it to a specialty shop and they might uh, charge you thousands of dollars to do data recovery. And that's what they're doing. They're going to grab that hard drive and basically try to read off the blocks and try to, you know, reconstruct what used to be there. Um, it's probably not a good idea to get to that point. So just make sure you're making backups, guys. Um, so how is this different from just doing a copy of something? Well, let's do this. Let's uh, copy link three and I'll do a, uh, uh, I'll copy link to cars and I'm going to make a copy called uh, car copy. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. We got a car copy, we've got link three, we've got link to cars, okay? Um, let's take a look. Let's use this tool. So what you can see here is that um, car copy has a different inode because what we're actually doing is we're taking all of that data that was on the file system. We are grabbing it and cutting it and pasting it into another location on the file system. So now we have two unique things and what I could do is I could go into car copy and change it I could go and change this to uh, uh, something else you know just mess with it and of course what I'm going to find is if I'm taking a look at link to cars uh, that change is not there but if I look at car copy it's going to be there right so you're very familiar about how copying works, right? If I create a copy of something, then these two, these two files are diverging and they're gonna change and be manipulated differently. Um, but for example, if I go into uh, link to cars and I change this one to something else, I'm gonna call it a Shervy or something like that. Now, what I can do is look into link three and you'll see that that change is there again right so hopefully that uh, makes sense to you okay so that is the idea of hard links basically hard links are things that we work with all the time and we usually are not creating hard links manually like you just saw me use um, what's the relevance of this I'm not really sure I've never actually had to use a hard link or create a hard link for anything in any kind of professional practice but it's kind of good to know that it's there um, the thing that people do use quite a bit are symbolic links and to create some symbolic links is uh, very similar I'm just gonna move out of this directory over here um, so let's say I'm going to create a hard link to something in lecture 8 sucks um, and I'm going to look at uh, link three something like this so you'll notice that I have a flag set up here um, the S stands for symbolic so we're creating a symbolic link or a soft link whatever you want to call it um, the first argument is a location for something that already exists and uh, I'm going to give it another argument and I'm going to call the new argument a soft link something like that right very very similar to how renaming works when you're new using the move command um, you're pointing to something that exists and then you know you're giving it a new name or destination or something like that right all right so let's take a look here um, you see a bunch of stuff this is a lot of my course notes so whatever um, but you can see that I've created over here a soft link and um, you can see that it's got a little arrow and it's pointing to a certain location, right? It's going to lecture eight sucks. What can I do with a symbolic link? Well, let's take a look inside. What I can use is less soft link. I'm seeing the data that's there, right? Um, but from this sort of uh, perspective, um, you can see that it's displayed a little bit differently. Okay. So that is 327.68.602. If I look in lecture eight sucks, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. If 
for link three, you're going to see it's not the same inode. Okay. And let's say that um, I'm actually just going to get rid of this hard link here and I'm just going to go back out and I'm going to take a look. You'll see now that this is in red. Um, this is because the file system is trying to tell me that um, this is now a broken link. Um, it's very, very similar to how hyperlinks work on the internet, right? You guys have a pretty good idea of um, when you are linking to something on a server, say, or you're linking to an image that exists on another server, um, you don't own that image. You've not created a copy of that image. You're just pointing to another address. So whatever happens at that, you know, actual source, um, if they decide to get rid of the image or they decide to put another image in that location, um, it basically wrecks with your stuff, right? You'll get a 404 or you'll be pointing to whatever image is there now. Um, if I take a look, it's going to tell me there's no such file or directory there because it's gone. I deleted it. It's gone. So one example of when you might want to use a soft link for something is um, could be to fulfill a dependency, for example. Um, it's sometimes that you uh, want to install a program and the program is going to be looking for a file, for example, in a certain location. Um, now that might not exist in that specific location where you are right now um, and you've got a couple of different options what you could do is just try to copy the file over there uh, but that can be wasteful and um, you're going to break maybe how you're updating that file right say it's a you know a python module or something like that uh, my python modules might live in a specific situation I mean a specific location right and I'm updating them with using pip for example if I am copying that stuff and putting it into another location where a program is expecting to find it um, that new copy that I've created is not going to be updated and it's not going to stay current and it's just generally wasteful so what I might do is put a symbolic link in that situation in that location uh, pointing to wherever the Python library actually exists. Or maybe something else that I can show you right here is um, if I'm going into my user local bin, what this is, is for my user, you can see my user is Eric here, um, I have a local directory where I'm keeping a lot of executables, binaries or whatever, you know. Um, I can go in here and you can see that I've got a lot of things set up. I've got a lot of um, symbolic links uh, to other locations. So, you know, I've got like a, a little script that I wrote for searching through my notes. Um, I have that in my Dropbox directory just because whatever, it's easy. I can, you know, have it sync across all my devices and be the same script basically. And now that I've got it in this uh, local bin directory. Um, I can execute it normally and it's not going to cause me any issues at all, right? I've also got a couple of things set up here for virtual environments. Um, if you're doing any development with Python, you might want to set up virtual environments just to keep track of the dependencies and modules that you're using, like I say, right? And you can see that these are set up in a, another location. Okay? So to wrap up on uh, to wrap up with symbolic links, some things to keep in mind: you can absolutely break symbolic links uh, by deleting wherever the actual file exists. Um, if you do to get rid of a soft link, you're just using rm, just like a normal file. That's going to get rid of it. Broken links will not get resolved. Broken links will not get repaired. Uh, you kind of have to keep track of them uh, manually. Uh, you can create symbolic links to directories. You can create symbolic links to files, and they both work the exact same way. So if I'm creating a symbolic link to my Lecture 8 Sucks folder, and I'm just going to call this one Sucks, and I can get there, you can see that 
it exists. All I really have to do is I can use CD just as if it were a normal directory and it's going to work just the way that you expect it to. Okay.